welcome to this week's Double Bass with the Bass Pixie. So this week we're going to start looking at breaking down a little bit of music theory and learning some scales. Scales are super important if you want to learn how to become a true musician and not just copy what other people do. Um, if you want to learn to improvise and if you want to learn to make up your own bass lines, you really need to understand the very basic principles of scales and how they work within music. So in part one of the scales, we're going to look at two really simple scales. The names of these scales are C major and A minor. So if you've never heard of scales before, all a scale is, is a sequence of notes that sound good together. That's pretty much it. Um, and a lot of music is constructed around these basic scales. A major scale is it's just kind of a happy sounding scale. So an example of a major scale sounding is like this. And a minor scale is a little bit either, some people say it's sadder or some people say it's a bit darker or more mysterious. So a minor scale sounds something like this. What we're going to learn today is we're going to learn C major scale and A minor scale because these two scales are the most basic scales you can learn. Um, they have no sharps or flats in them. Let's take a look at the notes in C major. So in a major scale in Western music systems, you always have eight notes, two of which are repeated at the very beginning and the end of an octave. So you have like two Cs, for example, in a C major scale. And we're going to use the names of the notes, but we're also going to use the numbers of the notes, because when you're using um, scales within music, the numbers are used quite often to understand how things fit together. It's kind of where music meets maths and it does actually really work. So we're going to learn the C major scale and we'll learn notes one to eight, which come in order. So note number one is C. And we're going to play that C on the A string. Move your hand one position down, two fingers to play that C. Follow it with the open D. Okay. And the E, one position down. So that's where your first bit is here. First finger, E. Play the next note down, both fingers. So you keep your hand in the same position. Play the next one down. And we're going to play the open G. Here. Then same position as the E, play the A, then you're going to put all fingers down here, stretch them out nice and wide to find that B, and then we're going to shift the hand down one position to find that top C, okay? And they are notes one to eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or C. And then you can come back down again. Okay? And it's good to practice that just to get your fingers used to where those notes are if you're playing in the key of C. Now we're going to look at what they call the relative minor. So every major scale in the Western system has a relative minor scale. The relative minor to any scale is always three semitones below. So our C is here, one semitone below is a B, another semitone below that is a B flat, and then the next one down is an A. So the relative minor to C major is A minor. Now the reason we call it a relative minor is because it has the same key signature. So I mentioned that C major has no sharps or flats, and it's exactly the same for A natural minor. Now we can get into the complicated side of harmonic and melodic minors, but we're not going to do that in this video. We're going to just stick with the natural minor for argument's sake. Um, and we're going to learn how A natural minor sounds and how to play it. So A, followed by B, okay, which is shifted down one first finger, followed by C. Now from here, you'll actually just see it's exactly the same pattern as the C major scale. D. E, same position, F, open G, A. Okay? 
then back down. All right. So the reason it's a minor is because of the note it starts on. Okay, so that progression goes from A to A. And the way the notes are spaced out gives it that minor sound. Okay, if we were going to start on the A and we were going to do a major scale, it had different notes in it. So just as an example, the C isn't in the A minor scale. It doesn't do A, B, C. It goes A, B, C sharp. And that changes the sound and it changes a lot about it. Um, so that's why the relative major and the relative minor are the same because they have the same notes in them. They just start on a different note. So in the A minor, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, Those numbers are really important when we start looking at things like triads and chords. Okay. So if I say a basic triad, and we'll just quickly look at the basic triad of C major and A minor, the basic triad covers notes one, three, and five of a scale, okay? If you are playing a chordal instrument like piano or a guitar, you would play all of them together at the same time and make a really nice sound. When you're a double bassist, we don't tend to play notes at the same time, so we just spread them out into um, what they call a broken chord. Um, so with the C, note one, C, note 3 is the E, and note 5 is the G, and that is your triad of C major. And then we'll look at the same for A minor, so your triad of A minor is your 1, which is your A, 3, which is your C, 5, which is your E. And that's your basic triad. So now you have a little bit of an understanding of how scales are formed, how triads are formed, and you can start building on your music theory. If you want to see these chords and scales written down, you can go to my Patreon and sign up as a member. You then have access to all the lesson materials. So for you guys who are already a patron, go over to the website um, and you'll see these chords all written down um, on sheets so you can start working on your scales. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more videos. Um, and keep rocking!